to my video. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, floral waters. So, why do you use floral waters? Why do I use floral waters? I'm going to get into my personal experience with floral waters. Don't expect me to be some floral water pro, though I have been doing it for um, a few years. I just started off with plain rose water, and now I use a variety of different um, flowers and medicinal herbs sometimes, mostly the flowers. So, um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. So, a lot of the times, um, when you see floral waters, what you're gonna see is the description of um, a hydrosol which is a steam distillation process uh, that gets the um, distilled floral water. That's a hydrosol. Um, I also feel like a tea would be considered a floral water, like making a really concentrated rose tea and how it gets this really like dark red, super astringent, color, I consider that a floral water. Like, that's how I make my um, rose waters. Uh, I don't have a distiller yet, so I can't exactly, um, well, that's not true. I do have a distiller, I just don't have the tubing, the water pump, the whole thing, but stay tuned for that maybe. So in short, you probably just describe this as an aromatic water. So pretty simply what I do is select the flowers that I want to use for my tea. Since I'm not distilling, I have tried doing the distillation method with um, a pot and it's pretty simple. Um, what you do essentially You, you can kind of do the distillation process without a distiller. You can use a big old pot and fill it in with some, um, I would use like filtered water. And then you would take your, the, uh, the pots, English, then what you do is you take the pot's lid and the handle part is going to be facing downward. And you'll have a bowl inside this pot, a heat safe bowl, mind you. And this bowl is empty. And there's just water around. And that's where you're going to put your plant material in that water surrounding the bowl. But nothing is going to be inside the bowl because whatever is distilling while you're cooking it. It's going to drop down into the bowl and that's going to be your hydrosol or your distillate. It is a very long process and you don't get much out of it. So. It's, it's really up to you. I find both ways to be effective. I also think just doing the floor waters with like the pure plant material not only just enhances your connection with the plant, but it also makes it less concentrated. So if you are someone with sensitive skin, like and you can't put essential oils directly onto the skin, you should you shouldn't anyway. Um, you should probably use a carrier oil if you're gonna put it on your skin. But there are things like um, lavender essential oil that I apply directly to the skin without a carrier oil, and it doesn't bother my skin, but that is not for everyone. So, um, this way, just using the pure plant material and not a concentrate, um, you still get the benefit of the plant without it being at too high of a dose. Um, Probably one of my favorite things about floral waters is that it's not just for your face. You can also use it for your hair and it makes a wonderful hair perfume. Floral waters have all kinds of healing properties. 
depending on the plants that you use. Some may be more high in antioxidants, some may be more higher in anti-inflammatories, which is being cleansing agents for the skin. Regardless, they're getting a really great um, floral toner out of this. So I'll show you my personal um, choice for floral waters, as well as sharing some other potential um, plant allies that would be really beneficial for this cause. This cause. You need your floral water. How will we live without our floral waters? The cause, it was really... Well, I'm just beating around the bush. Let's get to it. I didn't show you the straining process, but whatever. Um, get a cheesecloth or a milk cloth um, for your straining purposes, or a little mesh thingy, whatever you find most useful, to strain the flowers out of the water before you put it in your jar. So here's my little Mr. Amber glass, just because it's best to protect against sun or other kinds of light. And my bigger batch. Can you see where the line is? Probably not. But um, this stays in the fridge so that it can be properly preserved. I did not add any preservatives. Um, you can add vitamin E to preserve, but that's only going to preserve it for so long. And believe me, this batch is going to be gone by the three months mark anyway, so let's try it on. <laughs> the best part about it is that when you spray it, it just smells <sighs> divine. You just 
just want to get it all up in your face. <sighs> I sincerely do suggest that when you do spray it on, you just... it all the more worth it. Ooh, look at me. Looking so hydrated, girl. Anyways, thanks for stopping by and watching the video. If you liked, please do subscribe and like the little video, comment, and let me know if there's anything else that would be of interest for me to make. Kind of just want to make these shorter type videos, nothing too long and crazy just really quick little fun adventures that I do. I made body soap the other day. That was pretty fun. Things like that. If you wanna see quick little tutorials on things that I made and how, um, yeah. Oh, good ride. It's a good ride. It's pretty fun. Just saying. Anyway, bye bye. See you next time. Also be sure to follow me on Instagram at Priestess of Moonlight and follow my shop at Moon Priestess Apothecary. I make crystal jewelry, I promise. I was just reorganizing so it's all hanging out. Yeah, it's nice. And I just got some stickers in. Aren't they cute? Oops. Yeah, there's three kinds of stickers. Stay tuned. All good things. I mean, only the best for y'all. So, may y'all have a lovely rest of your day. Stay safe, stay protected, stay in love, and romance yourselves. All right, bye bye for real this time.